Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games here. A painting War Machine and the character Warjack Cankerworm. Uh, 09143 Yellowed Bomb to start. So, Cankerworm belongs to the Crix faction and is a custom Bone Jack or Crix Light Warjack created by the Iron Lich Asphyxius. Now, Crooks calls their lights bone jacks because they actually use blighted bones in the construction, which are almost as strong as steel and serve as a substitute for the superstructure. In Cankworm's case, it was, as I said, created by Asphyxius, unlike every other character jack that was released alongside it, it is not based on a previously existing chassis and it has changed in the years since Asphyxius first unleashed it as its key abilities involve repairing itself by assimilating components from other warjacks into it. Its armament include its jaws and most notably the replicator at the end of its tail. The and let's see. Next. 09089 Cloudy Gray. The replicator has the ability to uh, copy or I'm guessing the intent is remove and utilize weapons from other warjacks. This one also has a scenic base and one that's so massive uh, there's not going to be any room for a flock at the end of it, so that's fine. Right. In terms of character war jacks, the first four to be released Deathjack, Behemoth, the Avatar of Menoth, and Thunderhead were all meant to be the epitomes of the technologies of their respective factions, or at least what they aspired to in the case of Deathjack, since Crix did not, to its embarrassment, actually make it, but rather enslaved it. The second set of character jacks. And I'm going to go with Pine Green 09010. With the exception of Cankerworm, the second cluster of character jacks were all based off an existing chassis from that faction. Crix's other character jack from that release, Nightmare, was an upgraded Slayer, for example, tied to Warwitch Denegra. Or I guess at that point she was Wraith Witch Denegra, with uh, Thorn from Signar being Major Victoria Haley's Lancer, Old Rowdy being Lord Commander Coleman Stryker's Ironclad, etc. Can't quite remember all of them off the top of my head. Uh, Canker worm has been known to it well. So, as partially magical creations, warjacks can develop personalities over time or during associations with particularly powerful individuals. And canker worm has a very bizarre and inscrutable persona. It's known to lie in piles of corpses and occasionally something will catch its eye that it will present to its master asphyxius for, ins for personal inspection. And none of the other Crick's lights look even close to this. In fact, no other warjack in the game looks even close to a giant worm. Well, there are some war beasts in the Hordes factions that 
are very worm or snake like. And I don't think I've ever still I still haven't figured out a cohesive color scheme for crypts because there are a lot of interesting individuals and their equipment is individually crafted even more so than that of other factions. Many factions run uh, some pretty extensive workshops to mass produce to exacting standards. But Crix's Necrotechs are known for intense competition with each other and trying to improve upon and outdo each other on existing chassis. Okay. I think the cowling above the head is going to be in a different color. I don't want the spikes in the green and at least this part of the jaws. I'll let that dry for a bit and move on. Okay, zero nine one nine seven old bronze. I'm sorry, I think every single uh, label print for this paint came pre faded. things on the base that I see as metal. Okay, and carefully, Cankleworm's got these plates in the uh, eyes of the skull that forms its head. This cowling in the bronze as well. As well as the smokestacks coming out of the back. These two panels, the end of the tail. I think a pretty good chunk of the end of the tail actually. I'm going to go ahead and redo in the bronze here. 
this uh, claw apparatus being the replicator. The name replicator seems to imply it's copying the weapons of enemies. But I think it was meant to imply that this tail actually seizes and manipulates them. This is one of its key abilities, but does require a model to have been destroyed first within a certain range. But I don't think this is an ability kink or will lose anytime soon because it's kind of its thing. That's one thing uh, Privateer has been consistently trying to do with War Machine is keep things to their own uh, themes. And 09206 Tarnished Steel. I might be over enunciating that, but I find I absolutely slaughter the word when I don't. So I'm getting these little plated wheels on the side or legs. Steel spikes on its jaws. These legs are primary means of its locomotion and system and uh, mobility systems like this are also why you will, that the uh, movement system on Warjags is called a movement system because while paired legs are the most common you sometimes get stuff like this there's a spike on the top there and the little jaws. This is one of the more simple color schemes I've done in a while. At least on the War Machine model. I can get the rest of what I perceive as metal. Okay, that's base coats. Let that dry and start shading. All right, time to start shading. Black and steel, 09205. This one's about cached. That should be just enough to, to uh, get the job done.
this particular layer is only going on canker worm itself, not the base. Because I want canker worm's metal to be pristine. All the metal of the base I want corroded looking. Red zero nine one two five scorched metal. Using this as a shade for the rest of the uh, tarnished steel will result in a rusted look. In fact, this is actually going to go on all the metal down here and make it look rusted. as if cankerworm's been meandering in piles of scrap which kind of fills in with his habit of lounging about buried in piles of bodies for unknown reasons that even its creator asphyxias can't even explain. think I can go ahead and get the bronze too. So that's going to be aged pewter 09196. Not too terribly much that. not too much that's going to be in a semi-foreseen condition anyway. Make certain of the camera. I might be able to afford a new camera this week. Maybe. But there's still the problem of finding a model that will suit my needs and allow me to go first person in my appeal for a first person point of view in my videos. All right. Set that down and let it dry. We're moving on to the next. Okay, next shade is going to be 09037 Pure Black. So I'm going for a very dark green on the uh, carapace or hull. I always have to see how well I pull it off. It's always tricky when you're using black to shade. It's really, really easy to get it. Just get it too 
dark and completely mute the color underneath. Oh, and for uh, you Warhammer 40,000 players who felt like clicking on this, uh, I think this would be a decent way to get that uh, Dark Angels green. At least in the painting style I use. So, normally you're going to use about half paint, half water. I'm thinking this out a lot more than that. Again, trying to avoid completely obscuring the green underneath, which, as I've said, this will easily, easily do. out but yeah well, I think I can go ahead and do the bone at least so stained ivory 09142 there are two skulls here one of them being canker worms head canker worms head itself the other being on the base, which I did not notice until I was about to start painting. Well, that's just uh, the way it goes sometimes. Looks like this skull on the base has a big gash in the back of the head. Probably the uh, wound that left it in its current state. I'll just blot that out of the eye there. And what makes Cankerworm scary is its uh, adaptability for its replicator weapon, which can let it steal the best weapon in your enemy's army. Alright, let that dry, get the last shade, and get start on lighting. Alright, last bit of shading here. Where is it? 09088 Stormy Gray. this on the stone and the rubble so overall that uh, using black to shade the dark green work reasonably well so. as I mentioned to you a uh, 40k player is just happening to watch this so far this looks like it would turn out to be a pretty decent dark angels green to see what the final product looks like when I uh, finish the highlights, but One thing I would advise anybody is don't be afraid to experiment. You might end up with something you didn't expect that you really like. Then I'm going to start on the lighting effects and the basing arc with 09039 pure white. Go ahead and hit the lighting first.
going to be these slits on the replicator. And then on the smokestacks. This is just the first layer to lighten it up. Very carefully, just the little dots. Well, let that out a bit and see if that doesn't look so bad. Okay. I guess the lighting effects I want started. And just getting the arc ready, just extending past the front of the base. This is probably going to be a little trigger because of the overhang of the scenic base, but I'll get it done. Overextending and doing the white first because I like to use a bright green to show the front arc and. That's again a mechanic warm machine relies on. So, let that dry. Now I can do the lighting and go from there. Okay. 09012 pale green will get the lighting effects and hit the, the color on the base. So. Cricks. Instead of normal coal, uses a uh, necromantically infused variation of it called necrotite. Which also gives off a very spooky green glow. So uh, often associated with cricks that natives of Imran often refer to it as to any green glow as Crick's light. Necrotite uh, burns hotter and is more efficient than normal coal, but it also produces fumes that are much more toxic than carbon monoxide. The undead of Crick's don't care because, well, can't die because they're already dead. But it is a concern for the living. Their choice of fuel has no in-game effect. But in uh, the fiction on some specific Warjack chassis, it was noted on a uh, burn usage or Hours, operational hours per full load of fuel that Crix Jacks would operate about twice as long on, on Necrotite as they would normal coal. So I uh, got the lighting effects done. Once it's dried, do highlights, finish up the base, and that's that. Okay, highlights. 09144 Creamy Ivory. This is at this rate going to end up being the shortest video I've done so far. And Misty Gray 09090. So again, the technique for highlighting is uh, called dry brushing. So no water, no water. Make sure it's dry. A little better. So straight paint, and then you're gonna rub it on the towel until it looks like there's almost nothing left. And then just lightly kind of dust over the area. You want to affect. will catch on the raised areas, but ignore it, but um, not on the uh, stuff underneath. Tarp. 
or no, 09207 True Silver. Get all mixed up. Oh boy. This might not be enough. We'll see what happens. So replacing the normal highlight with the scorched metal helps make this uh, metal look, this gear look rusty. Which is exactly what I was going for. And then Leaf green zero nine zero one one. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a nice uh, color combo if you uh, 40k players want to get that Dark Angels grain. Zero nine one nine eight tarnished brass. I don't know why I keep whispering in these videos after all this time. It comes off as creepy at the very least. Again, I don't have a clue why I keep doing that. I don't know. I'm very careful over the uh, eye plates here. Okay, that's actually all the uh, highlighting. Now I just need to finish up the base. So clean out, make a bit of space, make sure I've got the right brush handy. Uh, boy, are these getting shot already? Good grief, okay. Thing. I don't know what, but it was definitely something. All right, I'm gonna get cankerworm centered on the 40 millimeter mark here. Where we want it facing. So again, and uh, pure black 09037. Again, War Machine relies on a front arc. So there's that. There's no basing on this one. Since it came with a, uh, okay, that is not going to work. Let's try this one. That brush is just getting a little too feathered to do what I need to do. 
so carefully. Using one finger to hold it down, mark this. Oh man, that is too wet. Just blot that out. Try again. Carefully marking the sides the way I want them marked. Okay, that'll be enough to work with. So I can just quickly finish this up, complete the line. And taking a larger brush. Real carefully. Now, I don't need to mark anything on the back to designate uh, which number it is or anything since Cankerworm is a character and I can only ever take one in any list. So, uh, aside from needing to uh, dry completely before I varnish, uh, that's it. Cankerworm from uh, the Crooks Faction of War Machine, I have got to get a better camera. Anyway, until next time, I am Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games, signing out.